The Pullman Resort is one of those places that just positions itself pretty well. It's a very nice resort, which has done a great job offering a premium family product with some great food to boot. Let's get into it. Welcome to Fuguak. For those of you that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Kevin and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I think the internet is in need of a whole lot more honesty when it comes to airline and hotel content, and that's why I'm here. I just want to be real with you. I make trip reports and high-end hotel reviews, and I always self-fund my trips. In fact, you'll always be able to find the exact price that I paid in the description below. I don't alert any companies that I'll be filming because I want as normal of an experience as possible. So in this video today, I'm going to give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, and unbiased opinion based on my own experience. It's a bit of an overcast and ominous day on the island, but not to worry since it's a very quick drive from the airport. If you saw my previous Region Fuhuac video, the Pullman is in the same area, just about a kilometer to the north of it and the Intercontinental. The exterior, from the street side at least, is a bit odd, not gonna lie. It's giving me retro vibes, but not necessarily in the best way. It almost reminds me a bit of the Copan building in Sao Paulo. The reason the design surprises me though is because the hotel is near brand new. Opened in 2020, fantastic timing, the hotel has a total of 331 rooms and cabanas and was designed by Salvador Perez Arroyo. For the facade of the building, his intention was to create a complex with fluid lines and a kinetic whirl, inspired by the lively fishing villages of the island. Hmm. Okay. Once inside though, I assure you it's much more, shall we say, as expected. The lobby interior is inviting, with the first thing that you see being the all-day bar, the Lighthouse Bar, which is actually open 24 hours a day. My only critique in here would be that it feels like a collection of things rather than a cohesive design. Frankly, if they got rid of that blonde, round, wooden sofa, it would probably feel a little bit nicer in here. I do love a beautiful, randomly placed staircase, though. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces like the soundtrack titles featured in this video. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. Check-in will take place to the right-hand side, where you'll be offered a mulberry iced tea and a cold towel. Let's head outside and explore some of the grounds. In addition to the tower that we just passed through, on the right hand side, you can see one of the low slung room structures, which flank either side of the pool. Actually, maybe it's easier to imagine if we take a look at where we are and how this hotel is laid out. Phuoc is a Vietnamese island in the Gulf of Thailand to the south of Cambodia. The majority of tourists will arrive via the international airport, which is just a 15-minute drive away. Zooming in, we can see the full resort. Here's the largest structure with the majority of the rooms, and here are the three low-rise room structures flanking the pool. Then there's just a lot of space on property devoted to some of the cabanas before reaching the beach itself. The interesting thing to note is that the entire layout was meant to look like a fish. Now can you see it? Sure. But I get the feeling that the resort was designed and then someone looked at it and said, oh hey, that almost looks like a fish. But that's just my guess. The central pool is huge, like really huge. 
There's no adult only section per se, but this side is the more adult side of the two. On the other side of the venue in the middle are much shallower pools, which are all connected and a great space for families with younger kids. It's no surprise then that this is my first big point. If you're looking for a reasonably priced resort for a pool focused trip with kids, this really would be a good spot for you, especially if you had one of the rooms close to the pool on the side of the shallow parts. Here's your friendly reminder to click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help the channel grow. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. This venue, named Coconut's Pool Bar, offers bites and drinks throughout the day. As we look around, let me note that if the resort looks deserted, well, it kinda was. This was filmed in the summer, and while I normally always try to film at times when it wouldn't disturb other guests, the Pullman made my job pretty easy because occupancy was pretty low. Let's keep in mind that Vietnam's tourism market is recovering much slower than that of Thailand and Bali, which is why I waited until now to come back to Phuoc itself. That said, by the time this video is published, occupancy rates certainly won't be back to pre-COVID levels, but they will be a bit more lively for sure. As we head to the beach, let me mention my second big point. The layout is odd. I don't think it detracts from the experience, there's nothing missing, but it does feel like a lot more could have been done with the property. If I'm honest, it feels like all of the cabanas were built as a way to fill all of this space. Again, it's not really a complaint, but rather an observation of perhaps what more could have been. A separate adults pool, perhaps. These barriers here are common for west-facing resorts in Fuwak in late summer and autumn. Not sure why they're put up so early here, but I'm happy that they tried to have them blend in as much as possible. Far too many resorts on the island will put up the equivalent of like a blue tarp and call it a day. I should mention these are put here to prevent sand drifts from the winds during the rainy season. The beach itself was clean, spread out, and had a selection of free and paid water activities. As we head over to take a look at the Beach House venue, which is open for lunch, dinner, and drinks, let me mention a bit about Pullman and how they position themselves. As a brand, Pullman goes way back to 1894, when a French railroad company established a separate hotel group to maintain the hotels that they'd been operating near train stations. Fast forward like 100 years, and a core acquired a majority stake in them in 1991, and by 93, completely killed the brand. All existing Pullmans were turned into Sofitels. In 2007, a core revived the brand, mostly focused on business travelers. In 2013, they changed again focusing the branding more on a younger generation of, quote, mobile, hyper-connected customers, unquote. The hotels and resorts are said to be designed to be in tune with today's mobile world, blending peak performance and personal well-being. Each property is aimed to be a vibrant place where global nomads can feel at their best. 
really makes me wonder how many hundreds of thousands of dollars were spent to come up with that roundabout way of saying, we target millennials. Okay, time to go check out my room. I was booked into a deluxe king and was upgraded to a pool access cabana. Certainly I wasn't complaining, but I have no idea why I was upgraded. I know some of you wonder about these things, so I'll mention that this stay was booked through a third party using a burner email address. There are no Accor accounts attached to this booking before, during, or after, and the room that I was given is the same one that was already prepared for me on arrival. That last detail is one that I always try to pay close attention to. Anyway, here we are. The cabanas are in clusters of four, two above and two below. Each have their own private outdoor seating area, which all connect to a lazy lagoon style plunge pool. I'll let you have a look around and I'll come back to you in a bit with my favorite and least favorite details about the room.
Okay, let's start out with my least favorite details. First up, maybe they're just expecting this to grow in over time, 30 years perhaps, I don't know. But the outdoor shower area is very exposed. I mean, very exposed. And at night, you can see my little setup here. If you're not careful and you're getting too close to the door, you may be greeting the world in an unexpected way. Second small detail is that big old stain on the sofa. It's a pretty new place. You can't tell me that they couldn't scrub that out. Last up, no jackfruit. This is actually kind of ridiculous. No durian is very common due to the smell. No mangosteen is common since they very easily stain linens. But no jackfruit? Come on, it's nature's candy. There are plenty of details that I love though. First up, let's start off with the C.O. Bigelow bulk container products. When I lived in New York, the original Bigelow store was my actual pharmacy. So it's a bit of a nostalgia thing for me every time I see them on the other side of the world at a Pullman. Second detail is also in the bathroom. This giant soaking tub. I was literally shocked to find this in here. A really great thing to have. The last detail that I loved was the outdoor layout. It's rare when you can have four cabanas or villas, whatever you want to call them, clustered together and sharing the same pool space, but also give you a decent sense of privacy. I definitely suggest looking at the cabanas since they really aren't priced ridiculously high compared to standard superior and deluxe rooms. Also, they're pretty great for kids since the plunge pools are not that deep. Okay, part one of the sunset on the beach, and then we'll head up to the rooftop to finish it off. For dinner, we're staying up here on the roof and heading to Mad Cow. Yes, I know it is a horrible and tone-deaf name and it still surprises me. The Pullman in Saigon has a restaurant with the same name. Luckily though, the food was really good. In Saigon, they're pretty well known for their burgers, so I went with a Caesar salad and a burger. To say I was absolutely shocked when it was not just a tableside Caesar, but a really well done one at that would be an understatement. Well done perhaps besides those sad looking croutons, but I'll look past them in favor of how great the rest was. As for the burger, it also was delicious. My personal opinion, Vietnam has hundreds of burger focused restaurants and must have some of the most inconsistent preparations on earth. So I was cautiously skeptical, but it wasn't necessary. You should eat here, even if you're just staying at one of the nearby hotels. The overcast weather continued, so I unfortunately don't have any beautiful sunrise shots, so let's just get straight into breakfast at Salt and Pepper. Located just off the lobby, this is their all-day dining venue.
It was nice, fresh, and bright. But considering occupancy was low, I don't know why they needed all of this extra temporary seating. The food though, the food was so good. It's hard for me to say definitively the best, but I'll say that this is easily in the top five breakfast buffets that I've ever had in Vietnam. They had everything that you'd expect, hot and cold. But there were so many other little touches that showed you just the quality of the food on offer. Having French butter, for example, not common and super expensive in Vietnam. My favorite part of the buffet, though, was the extensive Vietnamese section. You've never heard me say that in a review before, because there's never an extensive Vietnamese section. I think it might have been obvious already, but my third big point here is definitely the food on offer. For this category of resort, it is one of the best food offerings in Vietnam, I think. Another example of how well a core properties focus on food and offerings in the region. My personal favorite were the Binh Dinh style banh mayo, which are those little circular rice cakes especially when they're swimming in fish sauce. Okay, so as we finish up the buffet and take a look at the nicely equipped gym, let's see if we can't wrap this up neatly. Service-wise, I would say it's right where my expectations were. Staff were all friendly and trained well enough but it's a very young staff. And so this is not a place to come for refined or individual service, if that wasn't obvious already. But I don't think that's a bad thing. The service here was mostly appropriate for the resort. As for just about everything else, it all exceeded my expectations. For the price, it's a solid offering for families or a couple just looking to get away. I really hope you enjoyed this review today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on my twice weekly content. I upload full length videos every Thursday and Saturday. I'll see you next time on a very special flight in Etihad Airways first class apartments from Abu Dhabi to London. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.